brought a pretty good clean selling arena. You're not going to face a crowd like this very often. Well, the only only problem with that was the St. Bonaventure blew the Bulldogs out. I think you have uh, contrasting games from this year to last year. Last year they came in with a 14-game winning streak to sell, and the Bulldogs knocked them off. This year, Bulldogs come in with the eight-game winning streak. The dogs get the opening tip as we are underway. And Tulsa's man-to-man. And playing behind Melvin Eli. Just like they saw in Rice, and Eli makes him pay with a shot. Except that was a much later double team, so Eli was pretty much one-on-one -on -one the whole time. Bulldogs are also man-to-man, -man, which has been their, pretty much their um, trademark. Steal by Swillis. He's third in the whack in that department. And that was Hill. He's left-handed, but he liked to drive right. The Bulldogs went over that in their pregame uh, talk. Again, it's Eli. Turns, fires, and hits two straight. Four-nothing Fresno State. That'll cause an adjustment by Tulsa. As they do at Selling Arena, the Tulsa fans stand until the Golden Hurricane score, and we have a foul away from the ball. I believe it's going to be against Eli. Eli and Ingram were battling for position. Eli's trying to front Ingram, uh, and, and Ingram was up pretty high that time. I don't know that, I don't know that um, Melvin needs to front him that high. He was midway up the lane, and he's not one of their, more, one of their scoring threats, really. Well, they haven't given the foul to anybody yet. A foul on the shot as the buzzer went off, and I think uh, the coaching staff, Fresno State, wants to know what that was about. Somebody buzzed the buzzer before the shot went away. I think it's because they don't know who the foul was on. Well, they gave the foul to the Tulsa player, number 50. That's Jack Ingram, so that's a mistake. The foul should have been, I believe, on Melvin Eli. Otherwise, it's Bulldog ball. I think Eli thinks the foul is on Ingram. Unfortunately, he's the only one that does. No, it is. Well, it is. They're going to reverse it. They were battling inside, and um, it was one of those probably could have gone either way. Well, how can an official, knowing that the foul is on the Tulsa player, then allow Tulsa to take the ball out of bounds? Well, I think what happens, Ralph, is the, is the official who calls the foul goes over to signal to the table. The guy who puts the ball in play is, is a different referee, and they rotate positions. Here you can see the two of them banging back and forth. And they just have a better, they got a better shot of Ingram elbowing Melvin Eli. When he goes over to make the call, I guess the official assumed that it was on the Fresno State player, and he went and put the ball in play from out of bounds. It was apparently somebody at the scores table who, now, who noticed the discrepancy and, and buzzed the buzzer. But well, you would think the official who called the foul would suddenly notice, right. hey, the wrong team has the ball. Right, and should have pointed down court. That's usually what you do when there's a foul on the offensive team. You point down the other way to at least let the scorer's table know. A minute in, it's Melvin Eli, four, Tulsa nothing. Tito Maddox. Eli with the rebound. Hooks it over. Can't get it to go. Marcus Hill has it taken away by Swillis. Two steals for Swillis. Porter. Maddox with the rebound. Porter again. Three. Hill another rebound. A couple nice looks for Demetrius and, and three offensive rebounds that play. This is what Harrington likes to do is drive the ball. Tulsa also is an excellent three-point shooting team, not only in the, in the number they make, but in the number of guys who can take them. Swanson dishes off. Blocked was Kevin Johnson, but a foul on Shannon Swillis. Uh, pretty nice play, actually, by the Bulldogs. Melvin Eli rotating over when, when uh, Tito Maddox got beaten baseline. Then they made the rotation. You can see here's a trap. He finds the player, and here comes Swillis to avert the dunk. Johnson, an 83% free throw shooter on the year. Yeah, the, their top five players, their top five free throw uh, percentage guys are all between 70 and 88. The fans can sit down. Tulsa's on the board, trailing 4-1. Tulsa playing man-to-man, -man, but not as much pressure as last year's Tulsa team. Maddox can't get it to fall. Ingram, the freshman, tries to go over Eli. 
The rebound comes off to Swillis. I think the Bulldogs will exchange center for some shots in this game. 4-1 Fresno State. Jeffries turns, fires. That's going to be long. Rebound Ingram. Harrington for three. He can do that. He can do that in transition, and he can take you off the dribble, so he's a really tough guy to guard. Four straight points for Tulsa. We're tied 4-4. Four -four. They're still behind Eli. Eli with a move along the baseline. Kicks it out to Porter. Wide open for three. Hits the shot, and he was fouled. A chance for a four-point play. Yeah, that was, that was a late double team on Melvin Eli. Looks like they don't want to double Melvin right away. Um, maybe they feel Ingram can guard him. It's a pretty tough matchup for him. You can see here's the tail end. They throw it out, and because of the rotation, we got Demetrius Howland. And it is a four-point play for Demetrius Porter, a four-point lead for the Bulldogs. It's going to run a fours. Back the other way, three-pointer put up. Rebound comes up to Swiss. The Bulldogs have a little break. Jeffries will pull up and fire. And he got hit from behind. He got hit on the left arm. Looks at the official. Doesn't get the call. And I think he got hit uh, right from behind as he was trail uh, from the trailer. Antonio Reed is in for Tulsa. This is Swanson. Bangs bodies with Swillis. That's two on him. Two fouls on Shannon Swillis early. 16-37 yes, remaining in the half. What Tulsa likes to do is post you up in the mid post about halfway up the lane. You can see right there, Shannon Swillis gets sealed off by the post player. So now when you drive baseline, there's no help. Shannon tries to get around. He can't get there in time. That's one thing Tulsa likes to do. The Bulldogs are aware of it and talked about it. They realize if they want to pressure... They're on their own when they drive baseline because they don't want to allow the ball into the post. Noel Felix in for Fresno State as Swillis goes to the bench with two fouls and two steals. Both free throws missed by Swanson. Jeffries comes out to Maddox. He'll take it up left-handed and lay it up and in. And a nice fast break there. Uh, Chris Jeffries did a real nice job finding Peter Maddox. Peter was going to give it back to him, but so he had the lane. Bulldogs enjoying their biggest lead up by six. Ten four. A lot of what, what uh, Tulsa runs is like North Carolina because Buzz Peterson is out of that Carolina mold. Played there and uh, had, had worked for some Roy Williams assistants. Antonio Reed's on the board with a floater. Eli with the right hand hook. Johnson with the rebound. Reed has two in a row. Reed's probably the quickest player on Tulsa, and yet Ralph, funny, he shoots 30% from the three-point line, yet this year has only attempted one free throw. Eli, double team. Porter. They're going to get some pretty good looks. How hot is Reed? Finally misses after two makes. Well, these are two teams like the up and down the floor. Transition defense is going to play a part in this game. Jeffries open for three. And hits it. And that's transition defense, too. That's just what Tulsa did. They ran the left lane, got an open three. Fresno State ran the right lane, got an open The left lane got an open three as well. Bulldogs hit theirs. Five point Fresno State lead. Five minutes into the game. Ingram cut off by Eli. Blocked by Jeffries and the shot by Johnson. Porter gives it up. Noah Felix finishes. That was, that, that's two guys with seven foot wingspans and Eli and Felix inside. When Johnson took the ball up, he figured he had the two big guys beaten. And here comes Chris Jeffries, the third guy with the seven foot wingspan from behind. Noel Felix doing a great job of getting down the floor. Nice pass by Porter. See, three pointers are 33% apiece, but the Bulldogs have twice as many. Porter and Jeffries have the three. Porter, a four point play as he hit the foul shot. Eli, shot looks, seven. Eli looks a little windy. Johnson with the right hand goes over Felix.
Johnson shoots 61% from the floor. Not because he's such a great shooter, but because he takes great shots. Like the one he just took. Porter, knifing through the defenders, can't get it to fall. Rebound comes off to Ingram. Five-point Bulldog lead. I think he might have been looking to pick up a foul on that. Knocked away by Tito Maddox, out of bounds. It'll be Tulsa ball. Timeout on the floor. 13-38, remaining in the first half. Bulldogs lead this one by five. It is a thrill of minutes. But time is almost up on Toyota Palm 01. Hurry to this blockbuster event for great year-end values on Toyota trucks and SUVs. Hurry. Get yours before these four incredibly low APR financing risks on new Tacomas, Tundras, 4Runners, and Ram 4s are gone. Toyota Palm 01. Get there before the thrill is gone. At your Toyota dealer. I am not a god. I am not a miracle worker. I am a healer. I felt that there was really a big need for a good doctors out there that are willing to help people. It's a satisfaction of somebody coming in who is in effect going to die, leaving the hospital and going back to a normal life. It's not the technology, it's the people providing it, I think, that's the big plus. I like keeping in touch with my patients. I've developed close friendships. I'm a student and I'm a learner. I'm a dad. I'm a teacher. I'm a doctor. I love my job. I love what I do. The busier your life becomes, the more important it is for you to stay informed and in step with the ever-changing world. And the KMPH 10 o'clock news makes it easy for you to do just that. It's news at a time that's convenient for you. Before you turn in, turn on the Valley's only primetime newscast tonight. Bulldog Basketball on Fox 26 is brought to you by State Center Credit Union. Not too big, not too small. We're just right for you. And by Carl's Jr. Without us, some guys would starve. Join KMPH Fox 26 next Wednesday night at 8.30 for the premiere of the new comedy Grounded for Life. It's a fresh and funny look at how parents deal with their children in the 21st century. Grounded for Life premiering next Wednesday at 8.30 only on KMPH Fox 26. Back in Tulsa, 13.38 remaining in the half. The Bulldogs have never trailed in this one. So far, it's pretty good for the Fresno State fans who made the trip. Oh, yeah, it's... Um, you, you can see Arfie Dick. Arfie won the karaoke contest last night at the hotel. You have uh, the Espinosas, there's Susan Struni and Donna Gilly, the Shirakawas. Travis the man, he heard the tape of our game. Stan Gajarian, great fan, and, and said he thought I was playing romper room. I see Donna Gilly, I see Carl Trujan. <laughs> it was not used as motivation, was it? No, no. Foul is on Mustafa Al-Sayed, just into the game for Fresno State, as is the guy he's guarding, David Shelton, which is going to be a very tough matchup for anybody. He got a foul there because he posted up. He also shoots, uh, has shot 51 three-pointers this year, making 35% uh, of them. Three team fouls on the Bulldogs. Shelton just in the game, battling for the rebound. He's just strong he is. He puts it up. The fans want a foul. They won't get it. Porter. Long rebound comes off to Jeffries. Porter's not knocking him down, but he's pretty close, and he's getting great looks. I don't know how that bodes for the Golden Hurts. And a foul away from the ball on Fresno State. So I know Felix moving screen as Demetrius Porter came off the... Felix picks, picks up his team. first. So here you have what you call principle of verticality. Those guys are straight up. You're allowed to go straight up with your hands, and if the offense initiates the contact, there's no foul. If there is, con if there's a lot of contact, it should be on the offense. Harrington for three. And that's what the Bulldogs were afraid of. Letting Tulsa run their offense all the way through to completion is going to hurt the Bulldogs because they run it well. The Bulldogs want to deny a lot of those passes. He looks from outside the free throw line, hits the jumper. He can make that shot if he's set, and he was on that one. Harrington dumps it off to Shelton inside, in traffic, and this time he does get the call. Well, and that was because Mustafa Al-Sayed leaned forward with his hands. Now the Bulldogs are in a little bit of foul trouble with their inside guys. Two fouls on Al-Sayed. 
There you can see his hands are, are stretched out but leaning forward, and that broke the plane. And this is a very good free throw shooting team. He's not hitting from the line so far. Not only, not only that, Ralph, but Shelton is the leading free throw shooter in the conference at 87.5%. I don't think you'll see that happen too often. Could be the adrenaline of, like you said, the revenge game. They've been talking about it, and, and um, the fact that they, the crowd is just really into this thing. One of five from the line for Tulsa so far. Two of six. Three point Bulldog lead. Dennis Nathan is in for Tito Mattis. A holding foul before the shot over the basket. And Buzz Peterson's complaining that this was the same thing that happened at the other end when Melvin Eli was running England. But I think the plan for Tulsa is to run a lot of guys at Melvin Eli and see if they can A, wear him down, or B, trade foul for foul. Charlie Davis just into the game, picks up his first personal. Jeffries. It's a two-point shot from the far baseline. Bulldogs are getting a lot of those inside-out looks. Inside to Melvin Eli, out to a shooter when the double team comes. Reed. Nice drive by Reed. He reads a little too quick for Nathan, mainly because he's a lot shorter than Dennis Nathan is. And then the defensive hands of Reed tips it away, but Felix gets it. This is a sloppy possession for the Bulldogs. That, that was a bad possession, I think. Tulsa has picked up the intensity of the defensive end, at least on that possession. Well, it started with a careless uh, pass to the trailer. Robbie to Davis. Over Eli, rolls in. So the Bulldogs are trying to front the post opposite of what Tulsa is doing, and right there they lobbed it over the top from the front where there's no help side. One point, Bulldog lead. Eli with great position. Puts it up in traffic. And he was fouled. Two shots for Melvin Eli. Antonio Reed picks up the foul. His first. Now the double teams are coming a lot faster when the Melvin Eli gets the ball. At first they were doing the slow double, similar to what team teams used to do to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Here you see they're coming down a lot harder now. And Reed from behind with the foul. Fans behind that glass backboard waving the yellow pom-poms as Maddox checks back in. Fans trying to distract Eli from the free throw line. Jeffries goes out. He leaves with five points. Eli makes them both. So Fresno State gets a little breathing room. Bulldogs up by three. Melvin Eli has six. We'll be back. horsepower Chrysler Sebring sedan. Proof that it's not the destination. It's the drive. We're glad our parents chose Brentwood Homes because we're best friends. We all go to school together in the highly acclaimed Clovis Unified School District. My friend Megan, her parents enjoy taking us skiing, even camping. It's all just a short drive away. And my dad likes to have a mom after a hard day. Mom likes it too. We're going to buy Berwyn home too when we grow up. Think they'll still be in the 100? Visit the models of Greystone Villas by Brentwood on Chestnut and Alluvial and Brentwood Fort Washington on Maple, north of Shepherd. Scene one. We open on a woman running. She's blonde like Denise Richards. She is Denise Richards, running from a mutant. No, she's just running. It's hot. She's thirsty. Cut to a drink. No, better. Wild Cherry Peps. Bob, cool. She reaches. Guy's hand. He's handsome. Hey, it's my movie. Why not? Cut to highway. Cool. Title, fade. 
fans, the personal seat license campaign for the anticipated Save Mart Center is well underway with over 75% of the seats in the future home of the Bulldogs accounted for. Be sure to reserve your seats with only a $100 refundable deposit. For more information, call the Save Mart Center personal seat license office at 244-2990. Seven left here in the first half. We failed, we failed to mention when Travis Demandy came into the game that this today is his 21st birthday. So he's where better than to celebrate your 21st birthday than on the floor in Tulsa? Demandy number 22 out on the floor along with Maddox, Felix, Eli, and Nathan for Fresno State leading by three. It's also shooting a better percentage, but doesn't have as many shots. They have more turnovers. Shelton. And that's the oh, 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 oh. That's the matchup we're talking about. Melvin Eli has to come out and guard David Shelton on the perimeter because he can hit that three. But when he does, Shelton can drive baseline. You can see he beat him there and, and uh, caused the foul. Right here, he takes him. You can see he has him beat by a step. Melvin tries to block. He gets the ball, but he has him with the body, which Shelton really did a nice job of, of getting his body into Eli. Antonio Reed goes out for Tulsa. Marcus Ledoux comes in. He's a sophomore, 6'8". Replaced a 5'8 with a 6'8". Two-point Fresno State lead as Shelton makes one of the two. Maddox. Nice drive to the left hand. He's another guy you have to play out there, too. Harrington drives. May have been knocked away by Eli. There's a block by Felix. Shelton has it. Couldn't get that one to go, and that may have been deflected. I think it was. I think Eli got a piece of it. Nathan for three. Transition three-point shot is open. I saw a backdoor play guarded very well by Dennis Nathan there. And Royal Phillips was just leaning on him. He got caught behind. And then he leaned on him. That'll be the second foul on Felix. 17 fouls on the Bulldogs. And it's four fouls on the Fresno State foreman. Two on Swillis, two on Felix. So Felix is out. Swillis comes back in. Playing with two fouls and 9.49 remaining in the half. Now Davis is not one of the better free throw shooters on the team, but about 61%. He's 52% shooter from the floor, 61 from the line, so you can see he's limited in range, but that first one was straight down the middle. And the rebound comes off of the hand of Eli, who then picks up another block of Shelton. It'll be Tulsa ball with 32 on the shot clock, but give Eli another block. Yeah, when the game gets close to the basket and it, it's straight up and down, Eli has an advantage over Shelton because he's taller. But Shelton has the, uh, you can see right here, ball bounces over Eli. Didn't get into him enough. But there he's straight up and got it. The inbound goes to Shelton and alley -oop. Dipsy do. Maddox. Gets it back from the man. And Maddox has great ball speed, but also makes pretty good decisions at the end of the day. The man he opened for three. He was the best three point shooter on the team. And it was a great move by Travis Demanda. He was on the wing, and when the ball went into Melvin Eli, he slid down to the corner, knowing his man was going to double. He threw the ball out. His man didn't know where he was. Not the open three down. Happy birthday. 22 of 49 now on three point shots this year. By oh, and, this, and this right here is really a bad call, Ralph. This one, I don't know if the guy saw. He thought that Travis Demandy was trying to bump Greg Harrington. Greg Harrington went down and was trying to screen Demandy. He was trying to get out of the way. 
to avoid the screen and get out on the uh, on the shooter. I think he just had a different look at that one. Eight team fouls on the Bulldogs, only four on Tulsa. Harrington shooting one and one. Six point Fresno State lead with 9.08 to play in the first half. And Harrington is nearly an 80% free throw shooter. Marcus Hill back in for Tulsa, replacing Dante Swanson. And the freshman, Jack Ingram, also returning to the game as Shelton goes to the bench. If you remember, Ralph Harrington was the one who took the last shot up in Fresno after Demetrius Porter hit the shot with 5.6 seconds to go and just rimmed it. And he was also the one who went coast to coast here in Tulsa and missed that short four footer that Coley tried to tip in and didn't realize he had enough time to make it and just rolled off the rim. Eli goes to his right on the glass. Yeah, we should have had a foul on that one, too. Looks like Ingram got it. Yeah, that, that's going to be a tough matchup for Ingram if he lets him catch the ball that deep. Eli with eight points leading all tours. Steal by Swillis. That's his third of the half. Gets it back from Maddox. Puts it up and in. Count the basket. Foul on Harrington. So that right there is classic defense. This is what the Bulldogs want to do. They want to deny the pass to the wing to the big guy. Tulsa likes to, like uh, a lot of the schools in that Roy Williams mold, likes to initiate passes to their big men. Most teams do not deny that. Shannon Willis gets out, makes a real nice denial, gives the ball up to his guard, who's a better ball handler than he is. Wise move, gets it back just in time to lay it in and get it. Three-point play for Swillis. Nine-point lead for Fresno State. That was a nice play. Dennis Nathan getting in the passing lane. 33 on the shot clock. 8.36 on the game clock here in the first half. This is Fresno State's biggest lead. Up by nine. Nearly a turnover. Ingram saves it. That was a tough play. Nathan got a hand on it. Nathan with a steal. He did get a steal. Don't have anything here. Maybe they do with the Mammy along three. You're right. You're Happy right. birthday. Yep. Nice play by Dennis Nathan. Seeing that, seeing the trail. He didn't have anything. They were two on four. He and Tito Maddox came down. He saw everybody in front of me. Figured somebody has to be behind me. That is the man be trailing. Kicks it out to him for a three. This is an 11 to 2 Fresno State run as the Bulldogs go up by 12. And what you're seeing, Ralph, are the Bulldogs get, getting the inside game with Melvin Eli, the outside game with the three point shooters. Tough to guard both. Time now for this week in Bulldog Sports, brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. We'll start with men's basketball. TCU comes to town Wednesday, January 10th, then Saturday the 13th. The Dogs look to avenge last season's two losses to SMU. Tip off both games at 7 p.m. Cap off your weekend by meeting the 2001 baseball team Sunday, January 14th, 2-4 to four at Passion Fair Mall. This week in Bulldog Sports, brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. Ralph, you wonder what counterparts do on games like this. This is a sellout for Tulsa. And Scott Weatherby, the ticket manager for Fresno State, who's had many sellouts of his own, is having a party at his place. And I think they're all rejoicing over that. Dennis Nathan getting in the lane on one side of the floor for the deflection, the other side of the floor for the steal. Coming down, you can see the two on four, kicking out to Travis Demandy for a three. And this Bulldogs is Fresno are, State strength right here. Absolutely. 23 turnovers a game they're forcing. They turn it over on an average of 18 times. And that's why you saw that Tulsa's shooting percentage was higher. Each one of those turnovers is pretty much is, is even worse than a missed shot because it has no chance to go in. Plus, it usually leads to a fast break. And the fact the Bulldogs are doing a better job on the offensive boards. Swillis with four points for Fresno State. Eight points for Melvin Eli. And as I mentioned, an 11-2 Fresno State scoring run to open up this 12-point margin. Right, but I mean, don't be surprised if we don't see Tulsa go on a run, too. This is a back house and town for team. Nearly another steal by Swillis out defending Ingram. 
Hill, the left-hander. Uh, he can make that one. That's what we were saying. They're good three-point shooters, and there are a lot of them. You have Harrington, you have Reed, you have Hill. And Shelton. Crossover by Maddox. Left hand. Rebound comes off to Harrington. So it looked like there might have been some contact on that one. Walking foul on Travis Demandy. They got there a little late. Reed's pretty quick. Travis tried to get there. He was a little too far away. Looked to take the charge. Got there a little late. Second foul. There it is. You can see Travis was guarding the ball. Couldn't quite get there. Tulsa really likes that baseline drive. Porter back into the game. Demandy to the bench. Also back in for Fresno State is Jeffries replacing Dennis Nathan. Porter's had some good looks as well. I said, you know, the game started out with him getting some good looks and not going down except for the one that he did hit in a four-point play. But then you saw some other three-pointers. You saw Jeffries had open looks. You saw Demandy had open looks as well as Nathan had one. Porter is not a guy that they want to give the open three to. Then they feel the game is in the Bulldogs' hands. Eli, a little too far out to take a shot, so he'll work his way in. Hurts. And I get to the free throw. Buzz Peterson launches off the Tulsa bench. And, and I tell you, yeah, at the official. If, if that's a home game, that's a technical. If that's a home game for Fresno State, he's teed up. What you had, what you had was the crowd was upset, but they had the foul. Buzz erupted off the bench. Although he has put on a few pounds, as the rest of us have since the playing days. I remember we recruited Buzz when I was at Tennessee. Great player in the state of North Carolina. But he got off and he was screaming. That guy looked him down, but he knew if he teed him up, he might not get out of here alive. Eli, a perfect three for three from the line. Fresno State has had more opportunities. Out shooting Tulsa by 10. For 27 shots to 17 for the Golden Hurricane. And Eli's now 4 for 4 from the line. In double figures with 10. And the Bulldog lead is 11. With a 4.3 liter engine. The new Lexus GS430 not only has more torque and more horsepower than the BMW 540i, it also stops faster. So really, which car is the ultimate? See Fresno Lexus. Remember Jared from Subway? Turns out he's inspired a lot of people. You're still looking good to show you the way. His name is Jared, and he'll lead you to Subway for seven sandwiches, six grams of fat or less. Subway, eat fresh. Go dogs, go Subway, and win a trip to the WAC. Enter now at participating Subway restaurants. Coming up in the second half is the Subway Slam Attack. Today's winner is Terry Steinley from Springville. She has automatically won a six-foot Subway party sub and a pair of tickets to an upcoming Fresno State home game. When the dogs get a slam dunk in the second half, she'll also qualify for a chance to win a trip to the WAC tournament, which will be right here in Tulsa. So good luck, Terry Steinley from Springville. Just under seven and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Fresno State up by 11. The Bulldogs' biggest lead was 12. Melvin Eli leading the way with 10 points for the Bulldogs. Ralph, what we can look for here, I think, is the uh, Tulsa has been playing man to man away. I would look for <clears throat> Tulsa maybe to go to their half court scramble trap defense. They like to do that, or maybe even a 2 3 zone just to give them a different look. Field goals are back down now, even, 48-47. But again, 10 more shots taken by the Bulldogs. And more free throw, and better free throw uh, percentage and also uh, a fewer turnovers. Bulldogs have not missed a free throw yet. Six for six for line. Eli, four out of four. Bulldogs come out in their zone. This is the Amoeba zone, showing a different look. Don't be surprised if both teams aren't playing zone in the next possession. Three-pointer by Parker, no good. Rebound. Jeffries, look out from behind. 
taken away. Antonio Reed with a steal. Jeffries has the green light to bring the ball up the floor, but Reed is quick. Got to know he's behind him. Swillis playing with two fouls. Look out. Takes the ball away. Maddox knocks wow. to the floor and out of bounds. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. No call. Oh. Ralph, we missed one right there. Maddox was just bounced across the line. And it's out of bounds. You can see, here's Reed. You can see how quick he is. Chris was, Chris was looking to give it up. And slowed up a little bit. Now the ball comes here. Shen Swillis, great hands. Gets a deflection. Has the steal. Could have been a tie-up. Bounces it down. Tries to get it to Tito. And there, that's... Not just a body, but yeah, it looked like a little yeah. leg action, yeah, too. That's a foul right there on Hill. Rebounds are even at 14. David Shelton is back in the game for Tulsa. Being defended right now by Jeffries. And there was a switch. And there was a reset on that. I don't think there should have been. I don't think there was ever any possession. They might be saying that Swillis had possession. Reed looked like he nearly carried it over. Hill with a three. And that's pretty good pressure on the shot. Looks like a rebound by Reed. That's a two. Porter answers with three at the other end. And that was Maddox throwing the ball cross court among about six guys right on the money. Bulldogs stay in the amoeba. Back to a 12-point Bulldog lead. Nothing here is the Bulldogs are going to have to fight through screens. Shelton nearly stolen by Swillis. And they're going to call a foul on Swillis. That will be three. So Maddox gets blown out of bounds. No call. Swillis, the hand check. Hand check. Yeah, well, I think referees, um, most of them anyway, are human. And it's a lot easier to make a call where you're going to be cheered than a call where you're going to be booed. Not that it, the, these guys are being affected, but to be honest, Ralph, I, we've been in the league six years and I've never seen uh, any of the three of these guys, nor have I seen any of the three of the guys that worked the last game against Bryce. Hill, 71% from the line. Not to say that that wasn't a foul on Shannon Swills. He went for the steal and then might have hand checked him. But the one before with Hill over Maddox was definitely a foul. Hill now has five, a 10 point Fresno State lead, as we are under six minutes to play in the first half. Bulldogs going into Melvin Eli again. He's one on one now. Good pass to Felix. Eli with the rebound, puts it up and in. I think Buzz Peterson's going to get a tee somewhere along the line. He's pretty animated. And to be honest, he may want one. Eli with 12. And a rebound. He had Porter, but gives it off to Maddox. A pretty smart move. He's been a tough pass. Like that one. Bounce pass. Last touch by Jeffrey. So it'll be out of bounds. Tulsa with 5.19 to play in the half. And a 12-point Fresno State lead. And Tito Maddox said right there to Chris Jeffries, I bounced it into you, and now I look. There were two little guys I should have thrown it up in a lot. Bulldog staying in me, but probably because of the foul trouble. So you're thinking, why would they play zone against a good three-point shooting team? The Amoeba defense is designed to, Shelton, a miss. Is designed to pressure the ball. Yeah, but there was pressure from Jeffries from behind. you got three guys in there that can block shots. Eli, Tulsa staying man-to-man. -man. Eli gets a sixth rebound to go along with 12 points. Referees have called it loosely for the Bulldogs inside, allowing their guys to block shots. Screen by Felix. Maddox rattles it home. It's a two-pointer and a 14-point Fresno State lead. And if he can make that shot, it's going to be nearly impossible to guard Tito Maddox. A long three-pointer by Hill. Yeah, Needs long. a bounce. Doesn't get it. Jeffries with a rebound. Yeah, long was the operative word. Pass goes into Felix. Turns. And misses. Rebound comes off Kevin Johnson. Bulldogs made Tulsa guard the entire the entire floor that time. Guarded the left side to meet this quarter, threw it over to Maddox, he threw it inside to Noel Phil. It's pretty good luck, didn't get it to go. 
345 left in the half. 14 point Fresno State leads. The ball knocked away by Porter. Goes back to Johnson. He gets it to Reed. This is Harrington. He's hit two threes. Ball staying in his zone. And, and I'll tell you, this is difficult because Tulsa runs a nice zone offense. They have a lot of movement. They're just not hitting shots, and the Bulldogs are limiting them to one. Hill, especially cold. Porter gets it into Eli. He'll be double teamed. Right hand hook. Felix battling for the rebound, goes out of bounds. I think it's Fresno State's ball, and that was a great ball answer by Noel Time Phillips. out on the floor. 317 left in the first half. Dogs up by 14. A great truck deal starts with a great price. And Merle Stone's year-end truck clearance means a great truck price and more. Like Silverado Extended Cabs, 20 to choose from at just $22,999 with low 1.9% financing. And while they last, take $4,000 off the factory window sticker on any new Suburban or Tahoe in stock. Over 300 trucks available. Pick your truck, pick your price. During the year-end truck clearance, only at the Merle Stone dealerships in Tulare and Porterville. Get a great truck price and more. Some financial institutions are too big and some are too small. At State Center Credit Union, everything is just right. State Center Credit Union offers all you're looking for in a bank and credit union, like free checking, unlimited ATM, and unique savings and loan programs. If you're tired of paying for everything at your bank or you think there's no better alternative, come over to State Center Credit Union. Not too big, not too small, we're just right for you. You get into the truck business because it's a part of you from when you're young. But if you're really serious about it, you sell international. Gibbs International, the fastest growing truck centers in the valley. Gibbs put together the truck, the financing, the whole deal with top quality service and total satisfaction. Gibbs International, the brilliance of common sense. In Fresno at Highway 99 and Jensen. In Bakersfield at 99 and Buck Owens Boulevard. Coming up at halftime, the Bulldog Spotlight will shine on Shannon Swillis. We'll have a KMPH 10 o'clock news halftime report. The Enterprise Rent-A-Car first half stats and the highlights coming up at halftime. The Bulldogs have opened up a 14-point lead. Also has missed its last five three-pointers. Elvin Eli having a big first half for the Bulldogs. 12 points, six rebounds, three blocks, and three assists. And all of those three-pointers missed were against the immediate zone. The key is... Not just the missing, but the limiting to one shot. Stop Al Syed in the game now for Fresno State. Eli's on the bench. And you can see the Tulsa defensive scheme stayed the same. They, they doubled him just like they doubled Eli. You'd think they played a little differently. Maddox loses the handle. Had it poked away. That nice play by Reed. He stuck his hand in there and got a deflection. Bulldog stays on. Harrington's trying to get off the off a screen to get an open three. Dangerous cross court pass. Now inside to Johnson. And where did they go? I think the Bulldogs will give up that shot. They go in by Reed. It's the second one that Jeffries has had taken away. And he answers with a block at the other end. And so he made up for it. The first one was because Reed was a lot shorter than Jeffries stole it from. The second one was because Jeffries was a lot taller than Reed and he blocked it. You got the game down at this level, but I got it up here. Fresno State ball out of bounds. And, and the Fresno State has a lot of, of uh, shots that were altered as well. Well, Jeffries missed it. Yeah, Almost the kidney there. Tough break. Yeah, yeah, it was tough gra grabbing that pass. It's a bounce pass from underneath. Did a nice job of catching it. Couldn't get it to go down. Carlson's is running a lot of screens to get guys open and moving the ball well and driving it. So it's a, it's a tough, this is a tough zone offense. Dante Swanson for three. And okay, there's no rest for the weary when Tito Maddox gets the ball. He comes right back at you. Maddox. Al Sayed puts it back up and in. And that, that was an assist off the rim, that one. He just threw it up there, and Al Sayed had his real nice presence of mind saying, hey, if this thing's going up, nobody's blocking me out. I'm going to get it. 13-point Bulldog lead. One and a half minutes left in the half. Harrington. Nice rebound right there. Noel Phillips just went up over everybody. 
Porter. Three. Sixteen point Fresno State lead. That's the Bulldogs' biggest of the game. Porter is in double figures with ten. He's three of seven from three point range. Tonight at 10, join Eric Alvarez and Tamara Henry with Dana Green on sports. George Mason with the weather on the KMPH 10 o'clock news. The Valley's only primetime newscast, only on your station, KMPH, Fox 26. Interesting thing here, Ralph, from a coaching perspective. Fresno State, signature defense, half-court pressure, man-to-man. Tulsa signature has been mixing up defenses, not only here, but in Buzz Peterson's career at Appalachian State. Played some zone, trapped, played man-to-man. -to -man. Today, Tulsa goes straight man due to the foul trouble. Fresno State comes out in the amoeba. Fresno State has changed defenses. Tulsa now, maybe believing 16 is too much to go zone, is forced to go man, unless they come out and try to trap Psychologically, Tulsa would love to get this deficit uh, under double digits before halftime. But just over a minute left. Yeah, and they're going to try to attack this amoeba inside out now. They're trying to go around the perimeter and screen. Now it looks like they may try to throw it in and then kick it out. See, although it's a zone, you're getting tremendous pressure on the ball. And right there, what you had was when the ball went to the corner, a trap. Now, not only are you trapping, but you have Reed at about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, being trapped by Al-Sayed and Eli. Two six nines. They took 26 seconds in that possession, got nothing out of it, but the kick ball resets the shot clock, which is okay for the Bulldogs. So far, the Fresno State defense, and there's an offensive yeah. foul is going to be called on shelf and away from the ball. And that's one of the problems that you have with screening. The more screens you set, the more you get a chance to get a moving screen. This was similar to the screen that Noel Felix set at the other end early in the game when he got called for a moving screen. The difference is the Bulldogs are now in the bonus, and they'll shoot free throws. First foul on Shelton. It's a one and one for Al Sayed, 17 fouls. The interesting thing here is that I guess you talk about the quality of your opponent. In the last three games, Tulsa has given up 49, 46, right, and 49 points. And that's for an entire game. Well, but but two of the games were against Curry, U A and M and Jackson State. Bulldogs have a chance to get to 50 by halftime. That shot was blocked. Tulsa may go for one last shot here just to, to keep the Bulldogs from adding to their lead. And they don't. Quickly, the foul may be on Eli. Push off. What happened was he didn't get a block out on Johnson, and Johnson wheeled to get inside, and once he did, Melvin pushed him from behind. Second foul on Melvin Eli. Now the Bulldogs have a chance for the last shot, but if Buzz Peterson coaches like those Carolina guys do, they don't let you go for the last shot. They'll probably, if the Bulldogs come out and hold it, will run some kind of trap at them. That's going to be long. You know, for a guy that shoots 83%, Johnson does not look like a, an 83% shooter. The shot just doesn't look, doesn't look good. Charlie Davis in. David Shelton out. Johnson with the second free throw. Cuts Fresno State's lead to 15. Thirty-second timeout. Fresno State wants to talk it over. Yeah, what what happens here? This is what we talked about in the Rice game. Late in the first half, you're you're. Um, Late in the first half, you burn a timeout if you don't use one. So Jerry's going to use this one or else he would have lost it. Fans come out and help build the North Gym on Saturday afternoon, January 20th, as the women's basketball team welcomes the Nevada Wolf Pack to the WAC. Reserve seats are $10. All general admission seats are only one buck. Get your tickets now by calling 278-DOGS or go online at GlobalDogs.com. A friend of mine, Ada G, is the women's basketball coach at Nevada. She was an assistant at USC when I was there. She called and said, why did you have to pick us for the game that you want to pack the gym? And I said, we're going to do everything we can to make life miserable for you. Now let's see if they allow Fresno State to go for the last shot. Yeah, it looks they're in a zone. They're a 2-3 zone. I wouldn't be surprised if they came and attacked it. And here they come. 
Double team Maddox. Yeah, Bulldogs worked on this in practice. Al Syed makes them pay. They worked on it. Tito Maddox split the track, but Harrington will get the last shot. Off the side of the board, he looks at the official, and time runs out. Harrington wanted a call. He didn't get it. All Bulldogs in the first half. Fresno State goes to the locker room here in Tulsa with a 17-point lead over the Golden Hurricane. Tark is deliriously happy. Buzz isn't. Here's my top ten at Fresno Bulldog Brewing Company. Bulldogs 25 boots. Bulldogs all-weather patio. Bulldog welcomes large parties. Bulldogs homemade ice cream. Bulldogs handcrafted root beer. Fresno's best fish and chips. Bulldogs Angus steaks. Bulldogs great atmosphere. Bulldogs great service. And number one, Bulldogs great food. Prepared fresh, no microwaves. Bulldog Brewing Company at the Fig Garden. Unleash the taste. Presenting Fresno Mitsubishi's Do the Math Again, featuring 60 months financing at 1.9% APR on new 2001 Mitsubishi. That's right, not left over 2000. California Representative Maxine Waters says the lessons learned in the election won't be forgotten. Florida may get its electoral votes counted here today, and the president-elect may become the president. We shall never forget what has taken place in this election, and we are dedicated to the proposition that we have enough power, we have enough strength, and we have enough of what was given to us by our forefathers to fight this battle all over again, to make sure there is justice for all people. President-elect George W. Bush will be sworn in as America's 43rd president in exactly two weeks from today on January 20th. Well, back here in the Valley, Fresno police are looking for a teenage murder suspect. They're trying to find 17-year-old Odell Omar Muhammad. He's wanted in connection with a brutal murder at Jensen and Walnut in southwest Fresno last month. That's where 69-year-old Alejandro Escareno was found beaten to death. Meanwhile, a 10-year-old boy and his 12-year-old relative appeared in court yesterday to be arraigned on murder and robbery charges. Both of them will be back in court on the 19th, so a judge can set a trial date. A 10-year-old faces life in prison if convicted. Well, our state treasurer has provided a plan to help solve California's increasing power crisis. Phil Angelides wants to issue up to $10 billion in tax-exempt and taxable bonds all aimed at helping bail PG&E and Southern California Edison out of a $12 billion debt. Both companies say they're close to going bankrupt. The authority would finance, acquire, own, and operate the state transmission facilities. And if you think of it, this is really the same notion of having a state highway system or a transit system in a city. As we have uh, more and more cars, we need more lanes on the freeway. Although the money will not pay the utilities debt, it would create a source of sufficient power and develop a possible long-term solution to the crisis. Well, there, there's more news straight ahead. Stay with us. Your business has more power with the help of our business. Let the CalFed Business Banker show you how. You have more power than you think. CalFed Commercial Banking. You have the power to organize your finances. You have more power than you think. Infinity Checking from CalFed. Friend Homes. With more value. For more families. In more neighborhoods. In our community. 
Trend Homes. Building for generations. Today is the last day to mail a letter for just 33 cents. Starting tomorrow, it'll cost you a penny more. The new 34 cent stamp went on sale last month. But the post office wants to help you get rid of your 33 cent stock and will sell one cent stamps. Microsoft plans to leap into the lucrative video games market this fall. The company is coming out with a powerful new play computer called the Xbox. Chairman Bill Gates unveiled it today at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Company officials say their product will have three times the graphics performance of its rivals, mainly Sony's PlayStation 2. Well, time now for the weather with George Mason. George? All right, Tamara. Well, finally, we have a weather system approaching the coast. We have one more cold night with the frost advisory for tomorrow morning. Then things change just a bit, as we see on the five-day outlook. Now, that is, we will get the rain Sunday night or Monday if the weather system doesn't split apart. At least we should have unsettled weather. Maybe right there Tuesday, but unsettled weather again. And for Wednesday and Thursday, we'll just call that chances of showers. Incidentally, we're talking a snow level of 5,000 feet. Cameron? Thanks, George. And that's our halftime report. Back at 10 with the latest news, sports, and weather. But now, back to the game. Forget it. I'll never meet anyone on this thing. The ES300 Lexus Value Package. New message. Six disc CD auto changer. Power moonroof. Leather trimmed interior. All for a savings of two thousand dollars. Mailbox full. Full in love at Fresno Lexus. It's a hot Saturday night crackdown. A knockdown drag out street warrior showdown. Blam! All new cops. Then, every day they sniff out drugs, thugs, and protect their partners. We saved my life. That's why I'm sitting here today. But which of these special cops is America's top dog? Find out when you go inside law enforcement's toughest canine competition. All new America's Most Wanted. It all starts at 8, 7 central tonight on Fox. Time now for Bulldog Spotlight. Shannon Swillis has turned out to be quite a steal for the Bulldogs. The former Bullard High star is a major reason why the Bulldogs are off to their best start in 19 years. He leads the team in steals, he's second in field goal percentage, and provides invaluable leadership on the court. He's a very, very intelligent player. He's, uh, he's almost like a coach on the floor. I, I love Shannon. He, he, does what, he does everything he can to help the team win. Swillis will turn 23 in February, making him by far the oldest player on the team. But the transfer from USC sees his experience as a valuable asset. It helps me because I've seen a lot of battles. Like, you know, playing at USC, I, I've seen a lot. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a, you know, a master or anything, but I've seen a lot. And I, like, I know a lot of things while I'm on the court that I think that can help the team, you know, defensively or maybe offensively also. So it's just, uh, you know, maturity has a lot to do with it. And does he get teased about his age by his teammates? Well, the only person that sees all the time on the team is Michi, and he's right up there with me. And then you got Melvin, he's up there with me too, maybe a little younger. So, you know, it's the people that talk the most is right there with me, so I don't, it doesn't bother me. Putting up big numbers is not a part of Shannon Swillis's game. Nah, he's more of a guy who does the dirty work, defense, rebounding, but he can score on occasion. I just do what I have to do to get on the court. Basically, you know, when I score for a team, it's a bonus. You know, I really don't shoot that often in games, but it's something I can do. And, you know, when I shoot it, people are like, well, what is this guy doing? I mean, it's a shit I take in practice all the time. It's a shot that I know I can make. So when it comes down to it, I have confidence in myself that I can make that shot. You'll visit more with Shannon Swillis right after this. It's time to score on all your Bulldog basketball clothing and accessories at the Bulldog Shop. The Bulldog Shop is the Valley headquarters for authentic Fresno State basketball merchandise. Suit up in all styles of Bulldog clothing for tip-off or any time you're ready to ride the red wave. Choose from shirts, sweats, jackets, gifts, and children's clothing for any sport. Don't wait for the final buzzer. Make a fast break to the Bulldog Shop. The Bulldog Shop, Cedar and Barstow, across from all three stadiums. Shannon Swillis knew that when he left USC, he'd have to first sit out an entire year, then probably have only one year of eligibility left. But that's how important it was for him to come home. Well, come back to Fresno. 
family has a lot to do with it. You know, coming back, sitting home. You know, my family, my brother, my parents. You know, my grandma came watching on TV. Now everybody is just. You know, everybody I grew up with and, you know, have a close relationship with and see me play basketball once again. And what about life after basketball? If I can play basketball like overseas or in the CBA or, you know, that would be all fine and dandy. But if not, you know, I really love computers. It's something I was trying to take an interest in. Yeah, programming, web designs, a lot of stuff like that. It's something that I like to do. You know, imagination gets to run wild. For now, Swillis is running wild on the court, and he feels if the Bulldogs keep up their intensity, they could go a long way. The one thing we pride ourselves on is playing defense pressure, you know, get all up in the guys. So, you know, the one thing that's going to keep us in it, and we keep doing it all year, is, you know, playing defense. Better listen to old man Swillis, the voice of experience. I'm Dana Green with the Bulldog Spotlight. Interesting. Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola? A paradox. While molecularly similar, they logically seem to offer two possibilities. Of course, you must invariably arrive at one and only one correct choice. Ah, a no brainer. Box Sunday. After all these years, the secret to Homer's stupidity is finally revealed. There's a crayon in my brain? And all in Simpsons. Then, Malcolm gets a job with the world's meanest woman. Fill this up. I'm not having any druggies in my house. And all new Malcolm in the middle. And a deadly assassin. You're not saying this guy has X-ray vision. Whose victims have nowhere to hide. And all new X-Files. After an all new Simpsons and Malcolm at 8, 7 Central, Fox Sunday. A 17-point halftime lead for Fresno State. Tonight's halftime locker room report is brought to you by Martin Chevrolet Oldsmobile in Reedley, featuring the Silverado, the most dependable, long-lasting truck on the road. As the Golden Hurricane come back out on floor, Jack Furtick has joined us from the Bulldog locker room. And, and what was going on in there, Jack? Well, Ralph, the first thing the coaches told them was this game's far from over. This is a comfortable lead right now, but things turn around in a hurry when you're on the road against a good team. The biggest dilemma Jerry Tarkanian faces is does he stay with the Amoeba Zone or does he come back man to man? He's decided to start out man because if that's how, number one, the players want to play, number two, that's how the Bulldogs got the lead in the first place. He went to the zone out of foul trouble. Bulldogs still in foul trouble, but decide to come out man to man. Offensively, still want to go into Melvin Eli, but they want to do it from a high low set as opposed to the double low they did in the first half. Fresno State had a 16 point lead. Tulsa got it down to 11, but the Bulldogs finished the half with a 7 to 1 run, deleted by 17, their biggest margin of the game. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane, not a good shooting first half. Greg Harrington had a couple of three pointers, including that one, but uh, for Fresno State, it was Melvin Eli early and often for the Bulldogs. Off the miss by Noel Felix. Eli will go in for one of his six first half rebounds and put it up and in. He had 12 first half points. Bulldogs also uh, were shooting well from three point range. They were left open for several opportunities like this one as Maddox feeds Demetrius Porter. Porter knocked down three threes in the first half. He had a four point play on one of them. He finished with ten points in the first half. Tonight's stats are brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car with weekend rates as low as $9.99. Call for details. Tulsa making less than a third of its field goal attempts and maybe more surprising, the free throws. Just over 52% while the Fresno State has made six of seven from the line. Bulldogs are out rebounding the Golden Hurricane. The points in the paint, 22 to eight in favor of Fresno State. Eli and Porter, the only two players in double figures for either Team Harrington and Reed leading Tulsa. Reed really provided a spark for the offense when the Tulsa needed it, Jack. Yeah, he did. The The difference in the game right now, Ralph, is the shooting percentages. Shooting percentages from the free throw line, shooting percentage from the three-point line, shooting percentage from the four. We expect Tulsa to make a big run here or an effort at a big run in the second half. We'll be back.
transportation advances again. The re-engineered, redesigned Chrysler Town & Country. The best minivan ever. He's her one link to the past. This Tuesday, let's take a ride. She's his only hope for the future. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I got the second one on. Golden Globe nominee Jessica Alba stars in an all new Dark Angel. You're going to give me everything you have, Terry. No! At 9 8 Central, Fox Tuesday. Some people are born to be parents, but these two are learning on the job. What have I taught you about sharing? Nothing. Grounded for Life coming Wednesday, January 10th to Fox. Back at Reynolds Center on the campus of the University of Tulsa, Golden Hurricane, trailing Fresno State by 17, and the fans here have to be absolutely stunned. Yeah, I think so, Ralph, but I, I think uh, more than stunned, they, I think they were a little wary coming in. They, they know Fresno State's a good team. Uh, they think Tulsa's a good team, but, you know, they did, they have lost four games, which is what they lost all last season uh, combined in the regular season, three to Fresno State. They, they lost at the buzzer at Oral Roberts, and they lost to Creighton by double digits at home, so I'm sure they were wary coming in, but I doubt they, they thought they were going to run into someone like Melvin Eli, 12-6-3 and three right now. Three of Fresno State's seven blocked shots in the first half. One was the next number, and that's regression, in case you wanted to know. Starting the second half, Hill cold as he was in the first. And that's what they like to do, is drive that right side. Maddox, bounce pass, Swillers can't handle it. Well, it wasn't that bad a pass. It was a nice play. Tito Maddox got in, penetrated, left it off, couldn't quite handle it. Close quarters, but it, I think should have been handled. Harrington threw the pass, and Johnson wasn't looking. It goes to Lewis. Maddox thought about the three. Tito you know, Maddox makes you keep your head in the game, whether you're on the opposing team or on off or on Fresno State. Played a minute, no one scored in the second half. Jeffries dishes it off. Point blank range to get it to. Eli, and they're going to call it Fresno State ball out of bounds with 11 on the shot clock. I think they were right on it. They have 11 on the shot clock. Bulldogs have to be aware of this. Willis will take that shot, count the basket. He was he fouled, did, and he was bumped, too. That play right there, normally they just throw the ball directly into Melvin Eli. Tito Maddox gave him a shake of the head and said, go over and screen. Whether he saw something or not, I don't know, but it turned out that Shannon's Willis got the ball, one quick dribble, looks to complete the three-point play. Short on the free throw, Willis has five points and five rebounds. And a 19-point Fresno State lead. Bulldog, as we said, coming out man. Kicked by oh. Willis, resets the clock. The thing they worry about here is the foul trouble, but they like the fact that they're, they've are they been playing half-court man all year. It's their signature defense and played it well in the first half. Just went out of it because of the foul trouble. A lot of screen the screener. One guy sets a screen and then someone sets a screen for the guy who set the screen. Tough to guard. Hill inside the Johnson. Foul will be on Eli. Kevin Johnson to the free throw line. That'll be Melvin Eli's third foul. And Swillis went for the steal on that one and left Eli there to help. Johnson took it strong and Eli fouled him. Johnson 2 of 4, making 3 of 5 from the free throw line. He has 5 points. Well, it's nice rotation, but he doesn't have much arc. But tough to argue with the guy shooting over 80%. Looks like he might have to stroke back now. Made three in a row. Jerry wants to talk it over right away. And with Melvin Eli with three fouls, and Shannon Swillis with three fouls, I think you might see them go back to the amoeba. 
time now for this week of Bulldog Sports, brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. Tomorrow afternoon at 2, it's Fresno State Women's Basketball. Your Bulldogs will take on the New Tech Miners in a whack showdown at the North Gym. 1998 National Champion Stephen Abbas and the Bulldog Wrestling Team will take on National Power Oklahoma Sunday, January 14th, 7 p.m. at the North Gym. For ticket information for exciting Bulldog sports, call 278-DOGS or go online at GoBulldogs.com. This week in Bulldog Sports, brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. Tark's Bulldogs lead this one by 17 with the ball. And Tulsa's going zone. Two, three zone, they match up. You can see they talk a lot. Try to have just one guy on the ball. Jeffries open for three. Going to be short. Rebound Johnson. Now point blank open jumper. Both of will take that. Harrington. Yeah. Just like Tito Maddox. He's going to take the ball out of the two. Trying to get the crowd in. We're trying to get something going. Lead is 15. It was up to 19. Now, now it looks like they're back man. It might have been just one possession. Maddox, that's a two-pointer. That's short. One and out again for Fresno State. And here comes Tulsa. Swanson. Short. Rebound comes off of Swillis to Maddox. Quarter. Three. They got Eli for pushing on. And that'll be four on Melvin Eli. That's big with 17-20 left in the game. Uh, it's, it's something that's a ticky top foul, but it's just something that doesn't need to be. There's no reason for Melvin Eli to have his hands on the back, especially when they've been calling it. It's kind of a tough call. Wasn't much of an advantage. You talk about advantage, disadvantage. See right here, he comes in late. Comes in late. That's kind of a tough break. A good thing a little shove, maybe with the floor, maybe a little acting. So Eli with 12 points, six rebounds, and the dogs are in the zone. Seventeen minutes to play. Fifteen point Bulldog lead. Reed. Throws it away, but it goes. Two on, clock. Two on the shot clock. They, they don't get it, it off. Nope, they didn't know it. What happened was Reed took a dribble on a penetration, wanted a three. They came out, beat him off the penetration, but because he was small, he went up, had to pass it. After he passed it, didn't realize the clock was still going. Harrington knew, but he couldn't get the ball in time. The eighth turnover for Tulsa. As we approach 16 and a half to play. And that was a concern of the Bulldogs at halftime that they had only four six turnovers. In traffic, quarter. Throws it away to Harrington. No, it's a breakaway for Hill. No, it's not. Maddox denied him the breakaway opportunity, but he'll go to the free throw line. See, right there, what happened was Maddox penetrates, kicks it back to Porter. Porter penetrates. No one gets back. Here you can see it. There's Porter. He throws it away. Same problem that Reed had at the other end. Little guy getting in, leaving his feet. But here comes Tito all the way from the corner. Nice hustle play. Stop the dunk. Hill with five points tonight. Two for two from the line. Now a 13-point Fresno State lead. And Tulsa is creeping back into it after being down by 19. Maddox, a very tough shot. And another one and out. Yep. Tried to draw some contact. Had a pretty good look at it. Couldn't get it up high enough. Swillis should finish. Yep. And that started with his homeboy. With that slam, Terry Steinle of Springville is just qualified to win a trip to the WAC tournament in March, courtesy of Subway. Ralph, you can't talk too much in this game. This game's going up and down because whoever wins the subway from Tulsa's got a slam. A turnover after a basket. Another dunk at the other end. 
by, I believe it was Hill. Timeout on the floor. Swillis putting the Bulldogs up by 13. What are we playing here? Wrap around Jerome? I don't know. What do you got? I got nothing. I'm out. Burger, fries, and a Coke. Don't bother me. I'm eating the spicy new sourdough pepper jack burger at Carl's Jr. I'm not a god. I am not a miracle worker. I help people get better. I always thought it made sense to be in a place where you took care of people and help them get back home again. We get to help new parents learn what to do. I'm able to become quickly involved in people's lives uh, in a very real and dramatic way. Two weeks later, they come back and tell me, Doc, I'm feeling great. I'm going out to golf next week. I'm a father. I'm a teacher. I am a doctor. I am a nurse. I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Get into the truck business because it's a part of you from when you're young. But if you're really serious about it, you sell international. Gibbs International, the fastest growing truck centers in the valley. Gibbs puts together the truck, the financing, the whole deal with top quality service and total satisfaction. Gibbs International, the brilliance of common sense. In Fresno at Highway 99 in Jensen. In Bakersfield at 99 in Bucko and Boulevard. We've got dogs against Mustangs one week from tonight on KMPH Fox 26 as Fresno State will host SMU. You can catch all the action live at 7 on the home of the Bulldogs, KMPH Fox 26. That'll be a take no prisoner game, Ralph. Fresno State still leading in the overall shots from the field by 10. At 10 more attempts. Ben Tulsa to this point in the game with 15-38 for the goal. SMU, two victories over the Bulldogs last year, so you're right, it will be a take no prisoners. Yeah. And, and the dogs really need to not get caught up in the excitement of run, run, run. The dogs got one at one end. They get the dunk, and Shannon Swillis, Hill dunks at the other end. When the ball is thrown back to Swillis, slow down, set it up. You know, you're not a you're not a one on one guy from 25. Shelton, Johnson, his pass on, to yeah. Johnson has it knocked away. Looked really good. Great hands by Chris Jeffries. Maddox with a lob to Jeffries, who hammers it. And he was going to shoot it until about halfway up into that shot, and he saw Chris Jeffries. Unbelievable peripheral vision by Tito Maddox. Tulsa sets that high screen for Harrington, and the way the dogs play the zone, he can't really get anything out of it. Harrington open for three. That time, short. Had to rush it a little bit. Hill got away with a push off over Maddox. Left to go. Johnson with a rebound off the and in. Well, you have to realize that with a sellout crowd, Tulsa is not going to allow the Bulldogs just to blow them away. They're going to start working a little harder, hitting the boards harder, and the Bulldogs are going to have to. The Bulldogs are going to have to, to attack the glass. Right there, Mustafa Al Sayed, his patented, which has become his patented spin move for the baseline. He gets the ball, holds it up high, he spins quick. They have nothing to do but power. Quarter out the man, the end. Al Sayed. Slipped along the baseline there, but he made his move. Right. Dante Swanson is in the game for Hill. Jeffries is trying to exploit the mismatch in height. Under 14 and a half minutes to play. Offensive foul will be called on Maddox. Granny, who is hurt. Like he's hurt. Yeah. Grimacing in pain on the floor, but he's going to try and bounce right up. And he doesn't get hurt very often. You see, this is the, this is the only way to stop Tudor right there. You've got to take the charge. He took it. He did take it, but he got hit from the second guy. He got hit from Johnson coming on top of him. Here's Swanson. Steps in and gets it. And that's where he gets hurt. No basket. They'll wave it off. Maddox picks up a second foul, but stays in the game. See if he's... Effective. 
Reed kind of launched that one a little early. Well, Chris Jeffries is everywhere. Swillis. Jeffries will fire. Three-pointer, Chris Jeffries. That's nice basketball. Tito Maddox looked off. Travis Demandy ball faked him. Got the defense to come out, hit Shannon Swillis. He turns, saw Jeffries in the corner. Knocked down a three. The lead back up to 16. Jeffries now in double figures with 10. Poor pass by Harrington. Great anticipation by Maddox. Knocked away from behind by Reed. It'll be Bulldog basketball. 31 on the shot clock. 8,300 referees in the building tonight. Only three of them are getting paid. Only pales by 2,000, the number that are in Salon Arena. Smart play right there by Mustafa. Throw it out. Start all over. Plenty of time. 18 on the shot clock. But there's a lot of contact on Tito Maddox when he handles the ball. Now 10 on the shot clock. And he knows it. Spins, releases, hits. What a shot by Tito Maddox. Now you don't see that one every day. Bulldog staying with the zone. See right there. They set that screen. Doesn't matter because the other guard comes out and plays Harrington. That part of the zone is very effective. Hill, a long three-pointer. That was great. They needed that because the lead had been built back up to 18 for Fresno State. Demandy bounces. Maddox hits again. And that's a little of Tulsa's medicine. If you're overplayed on the wing, Tulsa will backdoor you. Tito Maddox saw it, backdoored. Nice pass by Demandy. Tito wants a sub. He says his left shoulder hurts. Here comes Dennis Nathan. Maddox is the fourth Bulldog in double figures. He has 10. Yeah, he's grimacing every time he makes a move out there, it looks like. Carrington, shoot. Yeah, he's, not the used to the right, he's not used to that. He snuck along the baseline. Shelton came in the mid-post. They got that. Brought the guy, uh, Mustafa Al-Sayed, up in the zone. They bounced it in low to Harrington. Bounced it in low to Harrington. But he's just not used to being under the basket. And with all the shot blockers Fresno State has, just shot a little too quick at the underside of the room. They will start looking at Tito Maddox now over on the Bulldog bench. He's replaced by Nathan. And this is about the first time that Ferrer has ever seen Tito Maddox. So that's pretty serious. He's flexing his left shoulder. He's not a complainer. He, he's, he's a trooper. He doesn't get hurt too often. Most of the guys on the starting team don't. That's one thing that Ferrer was mentioning. Bulldogs are pretty swarming in that zone. Bill just way one long three quarter. This is that. That was a lot of pressure by Jeffries. You can shoot the ball that far out under that much pressure. That's a difficult shot. See how dogs do without their floor leader. Jeffries. Maybe. Bounces inside and turns it over. Great defense, nice actually. Nice play by Shaw. Yep. Got around. Mustafa foul say it didn't seal him. Swanson. Haynes. Follow up is put in by Charlie Davis. Nice play by the dogs, but they just didn't finish. Five in the game for Davis. Jeffries hits again. Another three for Chris Jeffries. And, and now has 13. And another Swillis to Jeffries. Fresno connection. Bulldogs are really extending the zone. Hill loses it. A break opportunity for the Bulldogs. This is Nathan. He'll take it all the way in. Well, Nathan's tough. He's, he's tough on the finish. Give the ball to Nathan, taking it for the basket. He's usually going to finish. Has a big body, good ball control. Timeout, Tulsa. 
That is now the Bulldogs' biggest lead up by 20. Baseball fans, the 2001 season's just around the corner. But before it starts, you can meet the Fresno State baseball team on Sunday, January 14th from 2 to 4 at Fresno's National Fair Ball. Coach Bob Bennett, the rest of the Diamond Dogs, before they embark on their quest for a trip to Omaha and the College Baseball World Series. Take a look at the upcoming schedule. We will also have Saturday's game there on the 13th against TCU in addition to Nevada on the road. So the next two Saturdays, Bulldog basketball on Fox 26. Tulsa's going to have to make a, a last-ditch effort. Could be some trapping. Offensively, they're stymied. They, they don't have that much of an inside game. They don't have the Brandon Kurtz guy that they had last year. Had a J.C. guy commit, but then he reneged after Bill Self left. So they're more a perimeter team and a driving team. Bulldogs stay in his own, which forces him to go outside. But the Bulldogs have really been doing a great job covering the, or at least pressuring, the perimeter jump shots. Harrington, short, saved by Nathan. Then he dropped it off of the Tulsa player, but out of bounds to the Golden Hurricane. We have a timeout at Tulsa, 10 12 remaining in our basketball game. The Bulldogs lead it by 20. It is a thrill of minutes, but time is almost up on Toyota Thon 01. Hurry to this blockbuster event for great year-end values on Toyota's best. Hurry! Get yours before these four incredibly low APR financing rates on new Camrys, Corollas, Solaras, and Avalons are gone. Toyota Fund 01. Get there before the thrill is gone. At your Toyota dealer. Discover the world of gotcha. Hey, it's never been fun before. Sunday night at 9, Scully and Doggett examine a series of murders that just can't be happening. Their investigation turns up two suspects, but which one is the killer? It's an all-new X-Files, Sunday at 9, only on KMPH, Box 26. Back in Tulsa, Ralph Wood and Jack Furtick, the Bulldogs leading this one by 20. Up by 17 at the half, extended to 19 early in the half. Tulsa made a little run to get within 13, but uh, Fresno State has weathered every storm to this point. You know, what, what's happening now, Tulsa having a tough time at the offensive end against the Bulldogs in the zone. They've tried shooting from the outside. They've tried to go inside and out. What they're trying to do now is penetrate for that short jumper that Harrington just had and kick it out. But what the problem you're having is the Bulldogs are spreading Tulsa's offense out. Therefore, a shot goes up, and it's difficult for them to get offensive rebounders because they have four guys outside the arc. I think what Tulsa may do is try to get some offense off their defense, look for them to go to some kind of trap in the half court. The good news for Fresno State, number two, Tito Maddox, is back in the game. He doesn't like missing basketball. Shelton. He knows a guy who's been quiet. He's got, got his right arm. He's got to go. <laughs> no, that's right. You only have two of them. 70, 50, 20 point lead again for Fresno State. Shelton. Blocked by Alsayer. Goes to Swillis. Nathan. Yeah, he got caught up in it right there. He didn't need that shot. Look out here. Shelton. Foul. Possibility for a three-point play. Maddox will pick up his third foul. That could be a that could be a six-point swing right there. He just got caught up in it like Sirshan and Swillis did when he caught the trail pass and tried to make his one-on-one. -on -one. 
he was open, you know, from the other side. But what happened was, you're not used to Dennis Nathan taking that shot. People are going in one direction. Ball kicks out. You don't get it. No floor balance. You come down. You get the foul. Now maybe it's three here. Shelton has been very quiet today. Only six points to this point. And I'm not sure if Buzz Peterson didn't have it to do all over again, he wouldn't have started it. Well, that shouldn't happen. As Davis gets the rebound, and then Hill runs into the end of the scores. Yeah. Mustafa al Sayed didn't get a body on him. Well, it's a good thing there's padding on the corner of that table because Hill put his chest right there. Ooh. Usually when you go into your bench, you guys are helping you. One more look as the coaches get out of the way. 18 point Bulldog lead, nine minutes left, quarter. Sure. And that one right there is really not a bad shot, mainly because Porter is more your designated to point shooter. And he was open, and you were somewhat into the offense, although it was fairly early into the offense. But the shot taken with about 20 seconds on the shot clock. I mean, you, can't, you can't stop shooting. I'll say it to the bench as Melvin Eli comes back here for Fresno State, playing with four fouls, 8.50 left in the game. Right, and we've talked about this. This is Jerry Tarkanian's philosophy. Even though he has four, he says, you know, can't help me on the bench. Harrington misses the three. Maddox with the rebound. And the dogs are running. And that, that's what I'm talking about, the, the contact that Tito Maddox gets. Eli, double team, gets it to the man. Hits another three. The dogs caught a break there because they want to play high-low. Noel Phillips is on the low post. His man is not even guarding him. He's coming over and they're double teaming Melvin Eli. Just as quickly as the Bulldogs took a 21-point lead, Hill cuts it back to 18 with a three at the other end. Hill has a really sweet stroke, and he can hit it from downtown. Maddox trying to be a little too fancy, whipping the pass inside intended for Felix. And out of bounds. And turnover, Tulsa will have the ball with eight minutes to play. Felix is saying he was held from behind, but I don't know if he was held or bumped. But the pass was difficult. It would have been difficult for him to catch anyway. Eli was on the bench for eight minutes and 50 seconds. And I don't think they cut him to the lead at all. Actually, Fresno State have extended it. Going up by 20. Now the lead is 18. 7.45 to play. You can see Ingram just doesn't want to take that shot. They want to try to go inside out. Looks like they're going for threes. Hill defended by Felix, drives around him, dishes off. This is Reed. Hits the deck, wants the call, doesn't get it. Three on two, Fresno State break. Demanding. Oh, baby. Oh, wow. Reed comes back with it the other way. Maybe we're not calling goal pins this game. And Johnson looked like he shuffled his feet at the other end. But it's a you know, call to Yeah, that was a goal pin all the way. I mean, that one, gee. They call that one in little hoopsters. And they're going to call an offensive foul on Maddox. Uh, and, and what happens here is this is what we were talking about. The, the contact that's allowed on Tito Maddox is really against the rules. He gets no calls. He gets frustrated. He does shove off. The lead is 16 for the Bulldogs. 7.06 to play. We'll be right back. Here's my top ten at Fresno Bulldog Brewing Company. Bulldog's 25 boots. Bulldog's all-weather patio. Bulldog welcomes large parties. Bulldog's homemade ice cream. Bulldog's handcrafted root beer. Fresno's best fish and chips. Bulldog's Angus steaks. Bulldog's great atmosphere. Bulldog's great service. And number one, Bulldog's great food. Prepared fresh, no microwaves. Bulldog Brewing Company at the Fig Garden. Unleash the taste. Your business has more power with the help of our business. Let a CalFed business banker show you how. You have more power than you think. CalFed Commercial Banking. You have the power to organize your finances. You have more power than you think. Infinity Checking from CalFed. 
The busier your life becomes, the more important it is for you to stay informed and in step with the ever-changing world. And the KMPH 10 o'clock news makes it easy for you to do just that. It's news at a time that's convenient for you. Before you turn in, turn on the Valley's only primetime newscast tonight. Bulldog Basketball on Fox 26 is brought to you by Gotchocks. Discover the world of Gotchocks, a world of selection, service, and value. By Community Medical Centers. And see your Northern California Chrysler Plymouth dealer today for great model year-end deals. Fans, if you can't make it to the ticket office, don't worry. Season and single game tickets from any of your favorite Bulldog events are available online. Reserve your seat by logging on to GoBulldogs.com, the official website of Bulldog Athletics. Jack is going to explain the Golfing rule, which the right officials missed here. Yeah. Right here, you can see in the in the NBA, this is automatic golfing because it hits the glass. In college, if it hits the glass, you're still allowed to hit it as long as it's on its way up. That ball was clearly coming off and was on the way down. That should have been a goal. Pick. It was a four-point switch because back at the other end, Johnson scored. That in Fresno State's lead to 16. And it looks like Tulsa has gone strictly to his three-point shot. Even if they go in, it looks like they want to throw it back out right there. Reed loses it. The man be on the floor. Ingram gets it back. Still lays it in. A wild sequence there where the Bulldogs looked like they had gotten out of it with the basketball. I think the man be didn't want to take the tie-up. He wanted the ball. He didn't want the tie-up. He could have just laid on it. Not a bad move. But it hurt the dog. Smart move by Melvin Eli, not going open for three. He'll usually hit that when it goes up and over. On the last play, though, when, when, when the ball was loose and it came out, Melvin Eli made a smart play, trying not trying to go after that block. Bulldogs were up 16. Lead went to 14, but at least he's in the game. That was Demandy's first miss on a three-pointer. It was three for four. The lead is 14 as we approach six minutes to play. Ingram. So they're looking for threes, but they'll take layups. There's still a lot of time left in this game. And Tito Maddox is on his side. I don't know if he's hurt or he needs a rest. That's cold, Jimmy. Porter released it. Johnson got it on the way down. Well, that one, the first one we showed in slow motion, that one was in slow motion. Here you can see, uh, you, don't have, you don't even have to pass referee school to get that one. They're trying to decide who's coming out. It's Travis DeMandy. Tito's back in. Demetrius Porter and Tito Maddox will play the two guard spots in a TAM in the Amoeba. The clock doesn't stop until the player touches it. That's why they were letting it roll as Johnson hits at the other end. Now the break and a turnover. That was not a good idea. No, not, not at this point. Ingram looked like he lost it on the way up, and it still went in. Now Jerry may look for a timeout here. Maddox, the ball is shooting too quickly. Swillis puts it up and in. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want to hamper him. It's too early to try to hold it out. They're only up ten. Not really a bad move. Great offensive board work by Eli and Swillis. Oh, three by Hill. Look at him coming forth. Forty points for Hill. And the lead has been shaved tonight. And I think you're going to see the Bulldogs go man to man. Swillis has it knocked away and he was fouled. Swillis got the rebound. Second big possession in a row where Shannon Swillis bails out the dogs by getting an offensive rebound, but then again, that's what he's in there for. It's only a third team foul by Tulsa, so the dogs will have the ball out of bounds with the new clock, and Jerry does want a 30. So like I said, Ralph, Basketball's a game of runs. You have a very talented team at home, capacity bound in their conference opener. They're going to make some runs. They're on an 11-4 run right now. Well, Fresno State's biggest lead was 73 to 52. That makes it a 16 to 4 scoring run for Tulsa with 4:46 to play. 
And, and Jerry's smart here. He's taking a full timeout rather than a 30. This year you get, instead of 530s, you get 430s and 160. He's taking a 60 now to calm the crowd down and the team. Joy Camp PX Fox 26 Wednesday night at 9 for the premiere of the hot new game show Temptation Island. Four very committed couples put their relationship to the ultimate test when they are surrounded by 26 singles and told to date other people. Who will survive? Find out next Wednesday at 9 on Temptation Island, only on KMPH, Fox 26. The Bulldog lead, the biggest lead, 73 to 52. A 21-point lead after a three-pointer by Demandy. Since that time, it's been a 16-4 run by Elsa to get it to single digits. Right, Ralph, you're, you're not going to let your crowd down. I mean, you're, you're not going to let them down intensity-wise anyway. They're going to come out, and they're going to battle. They're going to raise the, their intensity level. Bulldogs have to match it. They have been up to the point. Let's see what they do the last 446. The Bulldogs are still in control of this game. Fresno State needs to be a little more disciplined at the offensive end. The Bulldogs took some quick shots and missed it. That's I'm a sellout. Sure, I'm not sure it's a record crowd, but it's a sellout. Melvin Eli with the hook and the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Eli with 14. And we, and we talked about good players. Fresno State has good players. Tulsa has good players. But the best matchup individually for the Bulldogs probably is Melvin Eli against Ingram. Ingram being a youngster, Eli being very talented. They went right into him and knocked it down. The 11 point Bulldog lead, Eli with 14 points, 7 rebounds. Still, Bulldogs are man to man. And a holding foul called on Jeffrey. See now, and, and what the Bulldogs are upset about. That's a long way from the basket. Chris Jeffries likes to put pressure on guys. Harrington's real small. Jeffries has shown his ability to, small, to guard smaller players. But if you're going to call that foul, you have to call all the contact that happens to Pete Addix when people ride him up the floor or, or just bump him as he makes his move. 17 fouls for Fresno State, so we're in the one and one situation against a pretty good free-throw shooting team. Well, you don't want to put these guys on the line. You're allowing them to score points without losing any time. Okay, the dogs have gone back man to man. Harrington with 12. A nine point game, and here come the fans. Eli can't find anybody to get the ball to. Finally finds Stewart. Well, people wanted a five-second call, but his man wasn't guarding him tightly enough. Jeffries with 10 on the shot clock. Working on Hill. Spins off the glass, and he walks. Well, he knew he had Harrington on him. He tried to use his height advantage. Put a spin move. He must have, must have moved his pivot foot. Five points start until Harrington touches the ball. Fresno State may have to start picking him up in the backcourt. Harrington, he used the left hand to push the corner that called for the foul. But it's what you need here. The Bulldogs don't need to pressure at midcourt right now. The Bulldogs want to pressure. You can understand that. But with Tulsa being in the bonus, there's no need to pressure them at the center jump circle. Demetrius Porter has a case because Harrington pushed him similar to the way they called the foul on Maddox pushing off before. But what you've given them is probably in, in four seconds total of offense a chance for Harrington to make four free throws. And he hasn't missed yet tonight. Five for five. This is that. Maddox with the rebound as we hit the four minute mark. Jeffries nearly loses it, gets it back, drives, hits the back of the heel. Swillis has it blocked. The block by Johnson. Beautiful block by Johnson. Swillis didn't see it coming. Hill called nice the Nice trap. Out. Yep, he got trapped. He went baseline. Got trapped by the Bulldogs. They're forced to call time. I think they may only have one left. 
30-second timeout as Tulsa has whittled what was a 21-point Fresno State lead down to just eight with 3.39 to play. And for Jerry Tarkane and the Bulldogs, the clock can't run fast enough. No, he'd like to run more time, but what's happening is Tulsa's out, extending their defense, they're denying everything. I think the Bulldogs may go to some kind of backdoor play possibly here, or maybe a clear out to Chris Jeffries. What you're seeing at the Tulsa end is not much offense, just dribbling, fouling by the Bulldogs. I'm sure Jerry's saying, let's play solid defense, but let's not foul. You can get 2001 baseball and softball season tickets and show yourself a seat for another exciting year on the Diamonds for the Dogs. Call 278-DOGS or go online at GoBulldogs.com for details. Shelton, in and out. Oh, that was way in and rattled out. Yeah. So with three and a half minutes now, Maddox will slow it down. And he has been shooting a lot more threes this year than he did last. Eli. Swillis. Jeffries won't take the shot. Ten on the shot clock. Eli. Can't get it to go, but kept alive by Swillis. So the Bulldogs should run some more time off the clock now, and they will. That's three offensive rebounds in the space of maybe six or seven possessions for Shannon Swillis. Eleven boards in the game. Now right there you saw a double team. That's what they like to do. They like to double team on that. Swillis worked open. But Jeffries hits the three. So great Swillis. Swillis. Yep. And great we'll keeping that one alive. Right there, yep. Great, great job by Swillis on the offensive board. Great patience by the dogs. Trap on the baseline. And it's shocking that Hill would make that dribble because that's exactly what he did last time. And they're supposed to call a timeout. Did it again. Tried to call a timeout. Didn't need it because there's immediate timeout. 2.29 to play in Tulsa. The Bulldogs still lead, but the hurricane flowing. We'll be right back. Forget it. I'll never meet anyone on this thing. The ES300 Lexus Value Package. New message. Six disc CD auto changer. Power moonroof. Leather trimmed interior. All for a savings of $2,000. Mailbox full. Full in love at Fresno Lexus. Unhappy with your office copier? There's absolutely no reason for people not to upgrade. Wonko's got the Toshiba copier for you. I think most companies would be literally surprised if, if they took the time to sit down with us, look at what they're currently spending, and then compare it to what we could put them into a new system with. Call Wonko today. And walk away thinking, why didn't we do this a lot sooner? Toshiba copiers from Wonko Business Systems. Remember Jared from Subway? Turns out he's inspired a lot of people. He's still looking good. He'll show you the way. His name is Jared, and he'll feed you to Subway. For seven sandwiches, six grams of batter left. Subway. Eat fresh. Go dog. Go Subway and win a trip to the WAC. Enter now at participating Subway restaurants. Bulldog Shop is the official apparel store of Fresno State Athletics for all your Bulldog needs. The Bulldog Shop is located at the corner of Cedar and Barstow Avenues. Open Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Or you can shop online 24 hours a day at GoBulldogs.com. 229 to play here at Tulsa. Fresno State trying to extend the 20 streak to 9. And go 13-2 and two overall. 2-0 two and oh in the WAC. You know, a great way to open the WAC season with two wins on the road, but it's not done yet. Two and a half minutes to go. Right, that's exactly what Stanford did in the Pac-10, sweeping that Arizona trip. That's a tough trip, so is this one. Looked like Tulsa, looked like they were going to go with a little pressure. Bulldogs gave the ball to Maddox and emptied out. No trap. Bulldogs are spreading it out. Maddox, the magician, glances up at the shot clock. Sees it has 15. Slips. Jeffries. 
Oh, what a big three for Chris Jeffries. I'll tell you, Shannon, uh, Shannon Swillis, uh, Chris Jeffries ought to take him to dinner. Even if he just brings him over to his house. Jeffries now with 19, five three-pointers. Swanson puts a three to the other end. Might be a little too late. Bulldogs play it right. I think they got the ball in Tito's hands. Tulsa's not in a bonus yet, so they, they, if they foul, it hurts them if it's a common foul because the Bulldogs get a new shot clock. Game this clock is where, gets under a minute and a half. And this is where not fouling hurts the team behind. Melvin Eli wisely coming out to relieve the pressure. The rule is that the defender has to be within six feet of the offensive player. However, that six feet is up to to beat the buzzer, Swillis. Rebound by Bulldogs. Maddox. Yeah, the Bulldogs are putting it together today. Yeah. Maddox is fouled by Swanson as we dip under the one-minute mark. But it's only the 15 foul, so the Bulldogs get a new clock. So now they're up 11, 58.9 seconds to go, and they have a fresh 35. What does Chick Hearn say? In the refrigerator. It's in the refrigerator. Something about butter. And the door is closed. The lights off. Right you are, Ralph. Isn't that what Stu Lance said? And a foul on Johnson. We send Eli to the line. Shooting one and one. Six tenths of a second. Went off the clock on that one. Remarkable accuracy by the timer. Well, they have one more foul. Right. To give. And then right. it was Fresno State to the free And they're going to foul again. Yeah, they have no choice. You know what you're talking about? Total collapse at the line, shoots and threes, and they only have one timeout left, I believe. I think they have their 60 left, and that's it. And they fouled the Bulldogs, leading in free throw shooting. Maddox now with 13 points and seven assists. We're trying to decide on a player of the game. We're looking at Shannon Swillis, Tito Maddox, Chris Jeffries. Ball hit the side. And Jeffries gets the rebound. Fans head for the exits here as Porter is fouled by Harrington. So the, the, the key here, Ralph, I think the, the keys silence the crowd, which we talked about early. They certainly did because they came out er, uh, right at the beginning of the game and did not give Tulsa the lead. This crowd was in it. Bulldogs did a really nice job early in the game, staying in there. Finally took the crowd out of the game when they got the big lead. I still believe that if, they, if Tulsa has to do it all over again, they start David Shelton. Quarter, it's a pair. Let me show you the numbers for these guys, Jackson. Give me an idea who you like to play of the game. So many for Fresno State. If you have a win, that's Charlie Davis and an immediate timeout. Called by Tulsa. It's an 89-76 Fresno State lead. Ralph, if I had to pick someone, I would I would say Shannon Swillis because Chris Jeffries has a lot of points, but they're because Shannon Swillis threw, him, threw him, him the ball. Shannon has points. He has he, he has a, a bunch of points. He has a lot of rebounds, and the offensive rebounds were really key to the Bulldogs' runs. Wednesday nights are at the King of PH 10 o'clock news. Head coach Jerry Tarkanian goes in depth and inside Bulldog basketball in the Selma Auto Mall Coaches Corner exclusively on King of PH Fox 26. Brought to you in part by California Business Machines. What's the schedule for the Bulldogs this week at home? Bulldogs this week. TCU and SMU. TCU right? Wednesday. That was so the coach's corner will air on Tuesday night this week on the 10 o'clock news. Right. That game, the, the conference allows you to move games as long as they're not on TV within the league as long as each team uh, agrees to it. Billy Tubbs called and said, can we move our game from Thursday when it was scheduled to Wednesday? Jerry Tarkanian, you know, I talked to him and I said, you know, he, he asked me what I thought and I said, you know what? Two days to prepare for TCU and two days for SMU. Seems better than three days for TCU and one day for SMU. Looks like it may be to our advantage. 
And if Billy wants to do it, let's do it. And Jerry said, okay, and there we go. So it's a Wednesday, Saturday this week. Maddox fouled by Johnson. Four fouls on Johnson. 33.6 seconds remaining. Fresno State will improve to 2-0 and in the WAC. You know, we talked about the balance of um, Tulsa. The balance by Fresno State, I think every guy who played in this game played extremely well, had a hand in the victory. You have, you have the starters. Obviously, you have Maddox, Willis, Jeffrey, but you have Eli and, and Porter play well. But then off the bench, Dennis Nathan, defensively especially, plays a great game. Travis Demandy knocking down threes. Mustafa Al-Sayed and Noel Felix inside. Mustafa with the shot blocking ability. Noel with some key rebounds. Uh, total team history. Aaron can hit the three. That gives him 16. As Demetrius Porter will go to the free throw line. Shannon Swillis is one point short of a double double. He has nine points, 11 rebounds. He would become the fifth player in double figures if he could get one more point. I don't think the guards are going to give it up. Nor do I think they should, to be honest with you. You get the ball to your best ball handlers, your best free throw shooters. If they're going to foul you, take it. This game, you know, is one of those where they're fouling at the end. The margin's going to be big, and they say, well, the margin's not as big as the game. This game, the margin is. The Bulldogs were up in double figures a good part of the game and, and really deserve to win. Not only win, but win by pretty big numbers. Maddox. Gets the rebound. Out. Next week, TCU and SMU could see a Fresno State team ranked in the top 25. The Bulldogs are inching up in the rankings. They haven't cracked the top 25 yet, but perhaps a 13 and 2 record and an impressive victory here at Tulsa will lift the Bulldogs into the rankings. The first fourth straight win over Tulsa and the ninth win overall in a row for Fresno State. We'll be back with more from Tulsa after this.